In this lesson, we're going to take a quick look at JavaScript timers. Now, JavaScript provides two timers for the window object. That's set timeout and set interval, and they're both quite similar. So the first we're going to look at is set timeout. And you can see this demonstration using it, which is bouncing a ball around the browser. Now you'll find this in the API timers folder. There's a timer1.html page. And it defines the ball. And if you have a look at timer1.js, you'll see that there's a few variables set up to control the ball. And then there's an animate ball function. And what this does is move the ball and detect whether it's reached the screen edge and reverse the direction. Now this function is called again using the set timeout method. It accepts two arguments, a function name, animate ball, and the number of milliseconds, and we've specified 10. So this is saying call animate ball after 10 milliseconds. And what you need to be aware of is set timeout only happens once. So animate ball will be called after 10 milliseconds as long as JavaScript can do it. Now we also have another timer set here. Now when the page loads, the ball won't move for one second. But we can cancel that if we click it. This is handled by this event here which runs clear timeout, and it passes the variable st, which we defined here. So if I refresh the page, you can see it pauses for a second. But if I refresh the page and click the ball, it'll stop. There you go, it hasn't started. So set timeout runs once. Now more interestingly is set interval. That's demonstrated in this page. Again, we have an HTML file, timer2, which defines a ball. The script is very similar. It does exactly the same thing, although you'll notice there's no timeout function within the animate ball function. It's all handled here. So set interval is passed the function we want to run and again an interval in milliseconds. But what this does is continually run the animate ball function. So it'll carry on forever every 10 milliseconds. Again, we've added an event listener. So when the ball's clicked, it runs a clear interval method, which again is passed the timer variable. So if we can try and catch this, by clicking it, missed, there we go. It actually stops the interval by running clear interval. And that's all there is to timers in JavaScript. But there are some new features in HTML5 which we'll be explaining in later lessons.